So I am Eric Meister, Chief Operating Officer of Lean Logistics. I'm responsible for all the service teams with Lean Logistics. That includes our managed transportation services group, our technology implementation teams, um, customer support, procurement, as well as our supply chain uh, engineering uh, teams. And good morning. I'm Kevin Hall in charge of supply chain and continuous improvement at Hostess Brands. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the, uh, the sweetest supply chain uh, comeback in the history of ever. So for those of you that, uh, that don't know, uh, supply, uh, Hostess uh, Brands had a remarkable comeback last year. Uh, we're going to talk about the history uh, of Hostess, kind of the process by which they brought back that supply chain and the brand, and uh, kind of what some of the key learnings were associated with that, uh, with that recovery and relaunch. You know, Hostess is an iconic brand that goes back uh, many decades. And, um, excuse me, I want to logistically try to get this in touch. Um, <clears throat> so around 1931 is uh, when the Twinkie was born, and it was born in Chicago. Cupcakes came, ho-hos. A lot of us in the room, you know, had these in our lunch boxes. And it was a very powerful brand. And then as you see on the chart up here, you got a little dark area in between. There was a time over a 10-year period or 8-year period where the company was acquired by private equity firms, went bankrupt. Um, we call those the dark days of Twinkies. And, um, you know, it was just a failed business model. It, it didn't work. And so actually it went bankrupt twice in an 8-year period. And the last one was uh, in November of uh, 2012. And the company I work for today bought the company out of uh, bankruptcy in April of 2013. So we didn't buy a company. We actually bought some assets. We bought four factories. We bought the rights to the brands and a few peripheral assets uh, included. And we had to start building a company from the ground up. So I think the key call out here is if you look at the timeline, uh, last year, the company, uh, the assets were acquired in April, and the relaunch of the brand was uh, was uh, started in July. So that's that's three months. So if you think about your average procurement event, your average SAP implementation, um, you know, starting a, a a business from scratch, relaunching a supply chain from scratch in three months, is uh, is quite a challenge. You know, the old company had a decentralized supply chain uh, management model. It um, had a network of uh, depots, 600 depots around the com uh, country, had a private fleet. There were 18,000 employees in the old company uh, going to market and distributing the product. Um, it was uh, all uh, internal asset based and managed internally. Um, they had, uh, they had their own private fleet of tractors and trailers going between the facilities hauling products. Um, very expensive uh, and very constrained in what, what they could do as far as market penetration. This is a look at the legacy network. And it really didn't fit for a national brand. It wasn't an efficient method to go to market, even though several companies still use a DSD model to go to market today. So a lot of red, a lot of regionally based uh, production and supply chain execution on this legacy supply chain network. And you know, uh, it was a public funeral. Social media lit up when Hostess died. And uh, the consumers were posting heartbroken, heartbroken stories about how they were going to miss their Twinkies, their Chocodiles, their Ho-Hos. And uh, it really told uh, our new owners, that this was a powerful, magical brand, and it did have a future. It just needed a business model that would work. So basically, our new owners came in with the uh, with strategic goal uh, of leveraging brand experience and rationalizing supply chain. Our owners had built, bought, and rebuilt 77 brands prior to uh, buying Hostess. Some you might know: Bumblebee, Tuna, um, Chef RD. Um, they, they built the Pinnacle Company uh, that stands today. And so they had extensive experience in CPG and extensive experience in taking a brand and building it on the top side, but also building a super efficient supply chain to support it. 
From Lean Logistics' perspective, we had the, the privilege of working with uh, with the owner, uh, Dean Metropolis, on um, previous uh, businesses. So we fundamentally understood uh, the business model and the execution supply chain strategy. So um, that allowed us to get a quick start uh, and really engage in a way that was appropriate for the for the short timeline that we had uh, for three months in uh, restarting their supply chain. You know, this new non-traditional model, uh, model started with our marketing campaign. And, um, you know, we basically took, um, we hired a firm, Bernstein Ring, out of Kansas City. They do Wendy's and do a few other large national brands. And we told them that we're a startup company. We don't have a lot of money. We can't pay you right away. But come up with a national campaign that we, in three months we can get this product back on the market and, and be successful. And uh, the ad campaign they put together was amazing. So they had three and a half million dollars, but they created 50 million dollars worth of impressions and exposures in the market by going with a guerrilla marketing campaign. Um, you know, we, uh, we were on the Today Show. We had Snoop Dogg tweeting about Twinkies are back. You know, when Snoop sent that tweet out, we picked up uh, 3,000 uh, new followers on Twitter uh, two minutes afterwards. Um, we had ESPN commentators and NFL athletes talking about Hostess. Uh, we had, uh, uh, through, through social media, and, and for guys like me that have been doing this a long time, you know, we were looking for the radio ads and TV commercials, and, you know, they weren't there, but we were getting uh, 100 times more exposures and uh, 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 more market penetration than... Uh, than we would have ever got through a traditional method. So it was a learning experience. You know, this is a 12-story hotel out in California that uh, one of our ads went up on. And, um, you know, it's a very thrifty and creative approach. Um, it, was, it was all about social media and out of the home. And, uh, you know, this also leads into how we designed our supply chain, which is a very non-traditional model for this business as well. So just to set the table a little bit about where Hostess is today, a little over a year after we started up. Uh, when we came back into the market, we, the category moved 22 points that month, last July. Now think about that. This is a $6.5 billion category. And Hostess basically, when it went out of the market, the category went into steep decline. And that said a lot to uh, our competitors uh, moved very quickly to fill our shelf space. They came in with products. We saw new competitors come online. And, you know, you, I've never seen so many donuts out on the market today as there were. Uh, but um, they weren't getting the consumer. And so the consumer was still waiting for hostess when we came back. Uh, they came back with us. We sold out in two days of after going to market. And it created uh, quite a few supply chain challenges for us. In order to, uh, to get that growth and uh, support the non-traditional approach to the supply chain, um, it really was a reinvention of, uh, of the Hostess brand supply chain. Uh, those of you that have studied the Toyota production system in Lean might recognize this. We have built our operating model based on a Lean model uh, of the Toyota production system. And it's got some very simple foundational pieces. Uh, we standardize our work. Uh, we have one method for problem solving. It's all about uh, transparency. And our, our whole uh, strategy was to service the customers first and then optimize costs. And, um, you know, for a company that was bankrupt twice in eight years, you would think that we would be looking for the most cost-effective way to get to market. But it, actually, our method is let's find the most service and customer-driven way to get to market and then take out the waste. And that really is our approach. And you notice all the things in the middle that had to be, that are a part of that. That's where our partners came in. So fundamentally, uh, Hostess Brands was looking for partners that understood these founda foundational elements and could quickly bring expertise to bear um, on the startup of their supply chain. So being aligned on the supply chain model uh, with the partners was critical to the the quick and successful relaunch of the, uh, of the supply chain. And this is just a quick look at what the difference is in the old hostess and the new hostess. 
the supply chain model was a DSD, direct store delivery model, under old hostess. The new model is a warehouse direct model. And um, this was something new for our category. There was, was a few companies that um, were experiment, experimenting with it, but hadn't really made it work to the level that we needed to, to build this company to where it needed to be. Um, organizationally, uh, there was a decentralized supply chain where each region had its own supply chain organization. Uh, we do everything centrally now. It's all centrally planned and managed and executed. Um, our manufacturing facilities, there were 14 bakeries supporting the old model, and that kind of gives you a hint of how the old company struggled to make it work when we can do it with four. And uh, we bought five bakeries uh, after we did our first optimizational ex exercises. And I just want to remind everybody this all happens in a three-month period right before launch. Uh, we decided that we can do it with four, and we did not open the LA bakery. And uh, we have now rationalized one of the, another bakery down, and we're down to three. We're doing this at the same time as we're growing top line significantly. We had a 58% growth first quarter to second quarter of this year, and we're continuing to grow the top line. And we're doing that by identifying waste. We're building the supply chain to flow. It's a high speed, high velocity, high capacity supply chain. I'll tell you a little bit more about that uh, coming forward. Um, you know, we've got two distribution centers now, one for fresh products and one for frozen. And I can't tell you how many supply chain professionals said, are, are you crazy? I've never seen it done this way. My owner said that to us. And, uh, you know, your, your transportation expense is going to be too high. You're, you're not going to have um, some of the efficiencies that traditional companies have by having regional distribution. But when we looked at the whole system and the speed that we, we go to market, um, understanding that Hostess products are fresh products. I know that there's a rumor out there that they, Twinkie will last forever. It's, it's not true. Uh, they are fresh products and they will expire. So we've got to get out to market very quickly. And inventory just didn't figure into that equation. So, um, and then, uh, you know, the, the third part is our transportation. Uh, transportation was the key pivot for us to make this high velocity, high capacity market work or uh, model work. And, uh, 3PL management uh, with uh, scope and scale and common carriers was the way to make that happen. From a partner perspective, uh, the key focus for us uh, regarding supply chain talent was integrating appropriately with, uh, with Kevin's team. And uh, as his team changed, so it kind of, as people were added and responsibilities were, were shifted, it was um, our challenge to continually assure that we were appropriately aligned with his team and that we were bringing our expertise to bear to, uh, to meet the goals and objectives uh, that Hostess had laid out. And, and for us, a foundational component of that was education. So moving the, the education up front, and that, that involved training on our technology, as well as um, system integration, um, helping uh, the folks at Hostess to understand what was going on in the transportation marketplace, as well as what were the key components of uh, of a carrier strategy that would effectively allow them to, to accomplish their goals. Um, the roles and responsibilities shifted over time. So there were things that we probably, in a, in a typical relationship, we probably would do less of at the beginning uh, that we did because we knew we had to, uh, we had some pretty lofty goals to, uh, to achieve. Um, but that was kind of part of the partnership was um, integrating the two teams and being flexible in the way that we deployed the resources to make sure that we were making each other um, successful. Yeah, the culture uh, of an organization is the key to an organization's functionality and success, as we all know. What, you know, one of the things that uh, key learning is the culture uh, of our organization integrating with our partners is just as important. And making sure that we're connected and communicating is, is key. So what, are, what were some of the uh, changes? You know, this was one of the hardest things we did is change our production strategy. And Old Hostess was a internally focused, operational, excellent com company. Uh, everything they made was pushed. So you would bake product, you'd put it on a truck, and you'd push it out. And then the supply chain had to figure out how to get it into the stores and on the shelf. And, you know, there were hundreds of millions of dollars in waste built into a model like that. Um, and uh, we had to change that focus to a demand-driven uh, production complex that, you know, we make what the customer wants when they want it. 
And that's, that's, that was our single biggest challenge and probably is our continuing challenge that we have to change the mental models of the people that are working in the business uh, to be customer focused. And, and as the market changes very rapidly in CPG, we have to be flexible, we have to be dynamic, and we have to respond to that quickly. So um, the carrier strategy, um, you know, I, I, I'm going to say that the, the challenge of working with Hostess in a startup, the, the amount of variation in the supply chain was unimaginable, and our, our lean partners did a great job of keeping the carriers signed up and on board as we were going through some of those challenges. Um, you know, if you think about last, last year in April and in July, uh, a very challenging uh, transportation marketplace to be relaunching a, a supply chain into. Um, and and as, as Kevin mentioned, ultimately there was a lot of variability at the beginning, um, which uh, tends to um, frustrate carriers. Uh, and a goal of ours was to continue to make Hostess a shipper of choice. So mm -hmm. um, ensuring that uh, to the extent that there were uh, processes or interactions that made carriers uh, less efficient, um, that we were continually working to reduce those, mitigate those, eliminate those. Um, but you know, at the at the end of the day, with the with the rapid growth, this is a continues to be a very attractive business for carriers to partner with, and I think that ultimately, uh, the combination of the continuous improvement along with the growth opportunities, um, helped us uh, implement this this carrier strategy. Um, there are some, you know, as Kevin mentioned, that we're we're solving for cost and service, not one or the other. Um, so there are some decisions that have been made. Uh, in the supply chain to to take the waste out and one of the one of the largest areas of waste in the supply chain is inventory so um, there, there's not going to be a ton of inventory there's not going to be a ton of warehousing space um, and inevitably that leads to some challenges uh, in, from a so, from a transportation perspective as well so making sure that we're synchronized across the supply chain that we understand what's going on up front from a demand forecasting standpoint from a labor availability standpoint in the warehouse um, as well as aligning the carrier strategy, communicating, communicating with carriers uh, regarding what's going on, upstream, going on upstream in the supply chain is, is extremely critical. Um, and the other unique thing uh, about uh, Hostess is it's a temperature control network. So that's a different set of challenges when you're looking at uh, developing a carrier strategy, identifying and qualifying carriers, um, again, all within the context of the, the amount of change that occurred in the first six months of, uh, of the relaunch. Yeah, one, one of the things that uh, we were able to do in this design of our supply chain is we have one supply chain managing all our channels. So whether we're going to a vending channel, which is much different than a grocery retail, which is much different than a convenience, we're able to manage it through one pipeline. And the amount of efficiency that puts into your business, I don't have to tell you, you guys understand, but it also had some unique challenges to it. So vending, vending likes to get the product at 10 o'clock in the morning, cross dock it, and have it out to their customers that afternoon. So on-time delivery has to be precise. And um, which, you know, they also don't order in full truckloads. Um, it, was, it was a significant challenge for us. We had to step back. We had to come up with a different model. I think the other call out on convenience is the, um the service hurdle was very high for hostess to get back into that channel. So um, <clears throat> shelf, shelf space is at a premium. It's a premium everywhere, but especially in the convenience channel. And uh, so, again, the ability to manage costs but also service um, was critical for their re-entry into that specific uh, market segment. Yeah, the, our, the requirements on us for fill rate and on-time delivery for my CPG professionals just shake their head, you know, because we're performing way beyond what GMA says is, is best in class. It's a brand new company, so our owners closed on the business and they bought it from a bankruptcy trustee. So basically all, you know, they, they come in and they just hand you things. There's nothing intact. We didn't have an ERP system. We didn't have any uh, systems to enable our supply chain. And so we had to partner up with companies to put this together. You know, our SAP implementation was three months. Now, anyone who's ever put SAP in will tell you that's crazy. And um, Accenture was our partner on this one, and they told us a year and a half, you know, to do it well. But uh, we figured it out. We did it in Hostess time. And 
I remember we went live the week before we made our first shipment. And, uh, which, know, was fourth of, which was uh, Fourth of July fourth weekend. Of July yeah. weekend. Yeah. Yeah, I, I worked the last two Fourth of Julys, by the way. But, um, but we figured it out. And uh, it, it was a key learning for myself and others in the business because we were able to do things that we didn't think were possible. And there's some th key things that made it happen. Uh, but I'll tell you today, you can get an SAP implementation live in three months. Uh, if, from our perspective, uh, having um, fairly extensive experience with, with SAP, a lot of our customers use SAP, um, we could, kind of, we, we could um, craft our, our project in our timeline and our business processes around what was mission critical for the launch and we could adjust um, on, on things that were less critical. So the reality was uh, there, were, there were manual processes that were in place that supported the go live. Now, wait, wait a minute, Eric, I've got to punctuate that. <laughs> My younger associates in the business didn't understand that you can actually work a process without a system. There are manual processes. So that was a key learning for us, and you know, I had to explain to them when I came into supply chain, we didn't have any systems. You know, everything was a manual process, managing the business. So, but being able to work manual systems as well as system-enabled processes was a key to make this uh, launch work. And so I think that's 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 a key point. Um, we, you know, we had some integration issues with our distribution, our warehouse uh, partners on our first warehouse we brought up. The second one, we ran it manual for three months and gave them time to work it out. And that was a key learning for a lot of our associates who couldn't imagine that you, you would do these things manually. So, And uh, you, know, you identify those, those manual processes that are going to be um, in place and then you have a game plan for um, converting them over time. And I think one of the other things, again, a, a key theme here is um, adjustments as you go along. Um, there were a lot of minor adjustments that were made to our integration, to our structure, to our technology to support the hostess business. Um, and the fact that we're, we're a proprietary technology company as well as a service company allows there to be that kind of virtuous um, loop between the technology um, and the services and vice versa so that um, as new business processes or challenges were identified at hostess we could respond quickly and, and make the appropriate system changes to support those business processes. From, uh, from a lean logistics perspective, part of our engagement model, and we had the luxury of working with some of these partners previously, was to have a plan, a plan of engagement and interaction with each of them and the appropriate alignment um, at a sponsor and operational level to ensure that um, we were working together to make Hostess successful. So. Um, I'll, I'll be honest and say that didn't happen out of the box, so there were some challenges in getting that established, especially under the, the time pressures of a, of a tight timeline. But um, fundamentally, we have a, a well-functioning, coordinated partner ecosystem that's, that's supporting um, the hostess brand. And, and very good at manual processes. <laughs> you know, I, uh, I spent some time with my my team and ask them, uh, what, what, what is it about our partners that you like? And this is their comments that built the slide. And you know, I got to say that uh, Lean is one of the most effective and most efficient partners I've ever had the pleasure of working with. And um, you know, we, it's a culture that we can sit down and have hard conversations. When something's not working and Rome is burning, and it seemed to be happening a lot in the, in the beginning. Um, they were engaged with us as we're sitting in a war room at three in the morning the week of launch and we we went to market we we pre-built a lot of product and sent it out and we were sold out off the shelf in two days and we had to resupply talk about a supply chain problem uh, lean was right there with us we were on the phone at three o'clock in the morning with their people and uh, they uh, they gave us everything we needed and if you ask anybody in my organization today they will tell you that they don't see a difference in them and us. It's the same as well, just another department of hostess. And I think that takes, you know, it takes a, a unique culture of an operating partner. It takes a sense of humbleness, and it takes a sense of hard work and, uh, and a desire to succeed for a partner to make something like that happen. So it's been, it's been really good. 
Thanks, Kevin. I certainly appreciate that. Uh, it's great to have that, that feedback from, from a customer. And I think uh, on the, on the, uh, the same can be said for Hostess. So the approach that they take to managing partners and engaging with partners is a, uh, is a partnership approach. We're not a, we're not a supplier. We're not a vendor. But we are a partner. And if you look, um, even the, the involvement of, of the owner, Dean Metropolis, um, really kind of um, is a great example of, of how they view their partners. Um, Dean participated in our kickoff meeting in Kansas City and spent three hours working on the future design of the supply chain. So um, I've been involved in hundreds of kickoffs um, uh, with hundreds of customers, and I've never had the owner sit in for three hours to talk about um, what our carrier strategy was going to be, how we were going to go to market with, uh, with the design of the integration of the supply chain. So um, that leadership, along with the leadership of Kevin, um, and having uh, that level of support and that level of engagement uh, really allows us to, to, to drive the business forward and, and be successful as a partner. So um, we're certainly very appreciative of that and uh, certainly recognize that it is unique. From, from our perspective, from the lean logistics perspective, if you think about how, how we drive value, we talked earlier about the non-traditional approach that Hostess has taken to, to relaunch of the brand. Um, a non-traditional approach to a business requires a non-traditional partner model and uh, that's, that's what we bring to the table. So when you look at the, the components of, of our solution, technology, uh, relationship management, compensation, career management, the value of the network and freight payment, we're putting those pieces together in a unique way that fits the business requirements for Hostess. From a technology perspective, we are a proprietary. We develop our own technology and we provide services on that technology. So um, having that combination, as I mentioned before, is it provides that virtuous loop which ensures continuous improvement um, and solutioning for our customers. From a relationship management standpoint, we really focus on collaborative strategic planning. So we want to be operationally excellent. But we also want to ensure that we understand what the goals and objectives of our customers are, what their, what their business goals are, and how that impacts the supply chain. So understanding um, when we ask those questions, then we can understand what, how we can apply our services, how we can apply our technology to to improve their business. From a, from a compensation model, uh, ultimately uh, great relationships and great partnerships are about transparency. So if you, if, uh, if you look at the changes that were occurring in the, in the host of supply chain over the first six months, having true transparency to costs, understanding what the impact of those supply chain changes w were on transportation costs, on total supply chain uh, transportation costs, was critical to make sure that, we, that the right decisions were being made and they were being, being implemented in a way that was driving the results that we wanted. Um, carrier management and freight payment, in my mind, are kind of tied together. In our business model, the customer retains the, uh, the contracts and the carrier relationships, as well as the disbursement of cash to, uh, to carriers. And that's very important to keep um, us honest as a, as a partner. So having those relationships and having that control over the front and the back of the transportation process ensures that um, uh, we're, we're held honest and we're, we're continuing, continuing to deliver, deliver value. Those relationships survive the relationship with Lean Logistics. Um, we spent, at the beginning, as we, as we talked about, we spent a lot of time and a lot of effort in developing the appropriate carrier strategy and relationships on behalf of Hostess. And we did a lot of heavy lifting in that area that was eventually transitioned over to the Hostess folks when they were uh, in the appropriate chairs in the organization. And then the value of the network. Uh, we have about $8 billion worth of transportation spend uh, that's very complementary to the, to the transportation uh, that, uh, that Hostess needs. And so leveraging the network to identify not only carriers, uh, but also shippers that may have uh, a beneficial collaborative relationship with Hostess is part of our value proposition as well. Those benefits remit back to the, to the shippers uh, because we're not buying and selling transportation. We're really delivering that network value back to, uh, back to our customers. Building better supply chains together, that is, uh, for, any of the, for any of you that said in the, uh, the, the initial session, that is our mantra. We want to build better supply chains together, um, collaboratively with our customers. Um, it involves pulling together technology services in our network, uh, leveraging data, continuous, and best practices to drive that value, and it has to be ongoing value. So um, we have 
long-term relationships with customers that uh, are built on the fact that we're del delivering value in year four, five, six of the relationship, um, and that's through this continuous improvement and en an engagement with the customer to understand what their true business requirements are. Taking a deeper dive on our offering, if you look at the um, if you look at the technology and services that um, that we offer, Hostess uh, used all of these services at some point over the last 18 months. So they're uh, using our TMS as a bedrock for transportation management. Lean Source is our procurement tool, uh, a proprietary procurement tool, and Leadex is our benchmarking rates uh, for truckload, dry van, and refrigerated in North America. Um, those were key components of the value proposition that we offered Hostess. Um, leveraging our team in the appropriate way, I mentioned the supply chain engineering group. Uh, that was critical. Uh, to delivering on some of the changes that were occurring in the supply chain uh, for Hostess. Um, asking the right questions is critical. So a lot of times uh, customers will make, a, will make a request such as um, any transportation rates. And uh, empowering the people in the lowest levels of your organization to ask the question, why? Why are, you, why are you asking for that? Help me better understand why you're asking for that. Um, allows us to appropriately engage. So, you know, if somebody's asking you, I need rates out of a new location, new ship location, that's a great opportunity to have a discussion of, help me better understand what's going on in your supply chain and how can we provide services and technology to help support that. Um, and then we have a whole host of supply chain services in addition to supply chain optimization. Obviously our managed transportation service procurement, strategic support. Green Lanes is the, the identification of network opportunities I mentioned. Uh, Lean IQ is our training program. And then really focused on continuous improvement and driving the waste out and uh, empowering our logistics coordinators, our, our managers to, um, to challenge appropriately our customer when things don't make sense uh, allows us to continually drive improvement. And as a result of that execution of, of that model, uh, you know, having the right model and having the, great, uh, the right execution, uh, you get the optimal, optimal mix of, of uh, service and cost. Yeah, and I want to punctuate that one. You know, we're, we're still rapidly growing as a company. We're still, uh, you know, reestablishing ourselves in the market uh, in, through innovation, new products. And, and the top line's growing. Our service levels are going up, and our costs are continuing to come down on the transportation side. So it usually doesn't happen that way with your services improving and your cost is coming down. And, and that's the partnership we're talking about. So, you know, it's... Uh, it's it's really comforting for me to know that I don't have to worry about the cost equation, which all of us have over the last few years, and still drive the growth in the business. So, uh, a couple of key callouts. Obviously, the retail category leader in 12 months. Um, Kevin mentioned earlier the significant expansion in the category for all participants. Um, fill rates are at industry leading levels in 12 months. Um, and we share that information with our partners. They see a lot of our internal metrics as well. And that's a that's a key component. Is uh, we have a we have a balanced supply chain scorecard. So typically, as a transportation technology provider, you're not going to see fill rates. But that's something that we're looking at on a weekly basis, along with a whole host of supply chain metrics. And what that helps give us is a balanced view of what's going on in the supply chain, and understanding how the levers of transportation inventory. Uh, warehousing impact each other to drive continual improvement. So, um, again, that's an approach, a partner approach to, uh, to managing uh, uh, providers of, of technology and services, which uh, is somewhat unique. Um, and again, significant improvement on, on the service and the cost. Uh, this is a continual, continuous improvement process. So um, I'll just call out, you know, significant improvement in tender acceptance. So making sure that we have the right care at the right time at the right, right place uh, and making, again, going back to that chipper of choice, making sure that it's easy to do business with Hostess. Um, Fine-tuning the, the mode selection, whether it's LTL uh, or truckload, it's the appropriate use of LTL, uh, obviously. And then um, Hostess has been able to double the, the, the cases uh, on, on a truckload. So if you think about the impact that that would have on your business if you were able to double utilization. Um, it's it's hugely significant, and that was a uh, that was a uh, a process of understanding what uh, the risk was to the product. Again, delivering uh, more product to a customer that's damaged doesn't doesn't solve your problem. 
So understanding what the packaging requirements were, what the temperature requirements were. We do a lot of work on package engineering and pallet configurations, and it's, it's paid off for us. Which was huge. And then um, all of that results in significant reduction in transportation spend as a percentage of revenue, which is a key metric that Hostess looks at. And um, so it's quite spectacular if you think about an 8% reduction, um, 8 percentage points in, in reducing uh, your, your transportation spend as a percentage of revenue. Um, some of the specific examples that, that we talked about uh, with Hostess are, are really tied to common themes that we see across our, our customers. Um, this is a survey that Aberdeen re did recently that identified the key uh, transportation challenges and supply chain challenges for best-in-class companies. Um, rising supply chain costs, which is something obviously everyone's dealing with. Um, increasing demand uh, for service from customers. And then globalization. Uh, I think the interesting call out here uh, is that for best-in-class companies, you can see from this, there's a, there's a, rel there's a difference in the relative importance of um, cost and service between best-in-class best companies and all others. And I think that's reflective of the fact that best-in-class companies understand they have to do both and not one or the other. So the challenge for best-in-class companies is managing service and managing cost and getting better in both. Um, and these are all related because fundamentally globalization increases the complexity of supply chain. Um, at the same time, increasing competition and the dynamics of supply chain, uh, transportation, supply and demand, uh, you know, impact service. So these are all related, but I think it's an interesting call out. So from a, um, the themes are common. I think the, the reality is the solutions and the, that we've identified also would be applicable to, to many customers. So uh, taking a look at these common themes and then driving the solutions that were applied to, to host us, I think makes it relevant to, to most companies. And I also think some of the key learnings that we had as a result of this process are applicable to, to, uh, to most companies. Uh, from a, you know, our relationship with Hostess is based on continuous improvement. And uh, one of the, and the, that will be the common theme as we go through these key learnings. Um, one of the key things was that the goal trumps the plan. So, you know, ultimately, uh, there is no blueprint for, for starting a supply chain in three months. The design that, that we discussed in May wasn't the design that we actually implemented in July. Um, there were a lot of changes along the way, and if we had been rigid to the plan, uh, we, wouldn't have, we wouldn't have gotten there. So understanding what the goal is. If we were rigid to the plan, the business would have failed for a third time. So. Really understanding what the goal is and then working together to come up with creative solutions. Um, is, is critical. Um, a, a, a bad model cannot be defeated by, by great execution. So making sure that you have the right model, whether it's your supply chain model or whether it's your partnership model, is critical. Uh, because without that alignment, um, the best executor in the world won't be able to overcome it. Um, so it's critical that, that that gets taken care of up front. That requires time, understanding, uh, and patience to get that straight. But if, if you do that, um, that will allow execution to, to be great. Um, the other thing for us, and if, again, thinking about the context of starting a business, there were no metrics, there was no data. So we really were starting from scratch. But having data and making data-based decisions and having metrics that are shared across partners really drove the emotion out of uh, the equation. So there were a lot of late nights, there were a lot of 3 a.m. calls about service levels to this customer or that customer. Um, having the metrics that you could look at to drive those discussions really takes the emotion out of the equation, which is important uh, in, in when, you're, when you're dealing with uh, high stress situations. Um, I'll give you an example of, of one. Uh, uh, ultimately, there were, there were no ship to locations. So we're starting a supply chain from scratch. Um, you have new people that maybe don't even know what a, uh, a retail distribution uh, network looks like. So uh, one of the things that we did was we brought all our ship to locations based on our $8 billion worth of freight in the network to host us and said, these will be the warehouses that you will be shipping to. Um, you know, trying to, to, trying to lever the, the, the network data and our expertise to drive, to put those metrics and data in place so that we can make fundamental decisions. Uh, we, we've talked a lot about today about suppliers must be partners. Um, you can't, if this isn't a point A to point B type uh, situation. There are a lot of twists and turns along the way, and you have to have people that are um, 
aligned with your with your goals and objectives. Without that, um, you won't be successful. Um, and and Hostess identified that up front that they were going to need to lean on their partners and they were going to engage with them in the appropriate way to have high expectations, but also allow them to succeed. And uh, along the way, we had some tough conversations. There were there were times when things weren't working, uh, either with Lean Logistics or with other partners or with Hostess. And uh, we called those out and put them on the table, and we had the we had those tough discussions up front, and um, ultimately that's the only way you get better. Um, you know, um, Kevin doesn't hesitate to call me if, if we're running off the off the track, and I don't hesitate to call him. And that that level of engagement and uh, honesty in the relationship, transparency in the relationship, permeates all the way down to the logistics coordinator. If they see something that doesn't make sense, they're going to call it out. Um, but that's not something that's typical in, the, in these types of relationships. And and oftentimes you're trying to avoid the tough conversation, but really the only way you get better is, is by having them. So next steps for, for, uh, for Hostess in the supply chain. Um, you know, from, from our perspective, we're going to continue to focus on um, making host, a Hostess a shipper of choice and all that means. And that means continuous improvement on the relationship with carriers, uh, improving the performance of the warehouse, uh, improving visibility, transparency, and communication. Um, Continued focus on optimal, optimized uh, mode selection. So being nimble and, and appropriate in the selection of transportation to manage both cost and service. And uh, partnering with customers to reduce waste. Um, once you have data, once, you have a, once you've reached stabilization and you have data that you can then go back to your customers and have a database, metric-based discussion, it's pretty impactful. Kevin, you want to talk about that? And uh, Hostess is going to continue to grow. Uh, we are a growth company. And um, our marketing team is innovating. A lot of new products coming out. Uh, we're, we're very strong as an organization, I'll tell you that. And um, I think that uh, I think we have a very bright future going forward.